I'm Eric Singer. I uh, chaired a little conference that happened this week called NIME. It stands for New Interfaces for Musical Expression, and it's a really big geek fest of people that make weird electronic musical instruments and play them and compose for them. NIME is this, this conference, this annual event, uh, a community around it. I, um, uh, it's also sort of a new subfield of computer music. The theory would be that of the people who have seen some of this stuff, they will realize that this technology is, you know, available to them. And this is something, you know, you can do yourself. And it's not, it's actually not that hard, if you think about it. What's unique about NIME is that the focus here really is on interactivity, musical and audiovisual expression, alternate controllers, and, you know, the belief that the interface, that way of controlling the sounds or the images, can make an incredible difference. It's pretty unique. People at some institution can point to this conference and say, "Look, this is a this is a serious, legitimate thing. We should have a lab where people can build things. We should have courses where students can learn how to create their own physical devices, and so on." So it's um, uh, it's more than just a conference. It's sort of a, a new uh, new trajectory in, in the field of uh, music technology. It's difficult for an audience to go to a concert and sit in the dark and not see some activity on the stage, not you know, share in something about how the music is actually being produced. So I think it's important for the audience and the musician to deal with the, the aspect of what I would call control over the medium or actually making sounds happen with gestures, uh, with your hands, with your mouth what have you. And of course at NIME there are uh, experiments with all sorts of control mediums. We see people controlling music with their eye movements, uh, with uh, video uh, cameras that are looking at their body movements and having uh, sensors on their bodies and so on.
in acoustic instruments you have uh, the instrument itself that um, is at the same time the input device and the vibrating output device. So there is no mapping uh, between the, for example, in the violin, there is no mapping between the, the input and output. It, it, it's the same physical um, entity. Nine instruments, they, they have these three um, s stages. You have the, 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 the haptic input, um, the control mechanism or the mapping, and then the, the output that is mapped to sound, or, or it could be robo robots or, or anything else you want to map it to. the instrument builder is the performer rather than having a craftsman village and a conservatory city where they play the instruments built by the craftsmen who are players but they're not professional players they're professional builders and so we're very much in the era that's that's kind of retro in a way that each person is their own instrument designer they're the composer they're the improvis improvisateur and they're um, and as such, we don't even expect anybody else to play it. It's sort of like, I built this cool flute and it's got this weird scale, I'm gonna play it for a while, and I don't ask you to go to conservatory to study that. And so it is, it's very ephemeral in a way, it's, it's, but it's very personal, which is why a lot of us do it. There's a lot of um, interesting work done, again, retro sort of work, in the so-called circuit benders who find old electric and electronic toys like tube radios and transistor radios from the era when Japan was making the two transistor radio in the 1960s. Um, and they pop the tops off and hook wires to all the components and do odd things to them and make these god-awful wonderful noises.
all of the software that we write that I've written for these pieces allows me to stand up with the, with the other musician, my friend Michael, who plays the hurdy-gurdy and the didgeridoo, and, um, and gongs and other in, lute and wood and other instruments that we work with, um, to stand up with my Wacom tablet or with my Nintendo gaming controller, um, wireless controller, and actually physically engage with the sound and to perform so that people who are there and, and this is an ongoing discussion in the Nime community, but you know, people who are there as audience can see that I am actually engaging physically with the performance of the sound. And, and that I'm hopefully reflecting some sort of visceral quality about how I feel that sound is at that moment. I think a performance instrument is great, and I, I, you know, I'm myself a prog rock fan, so if I go to see a concert, like a sports game, I like to see dexterity, I like to see virtuosity, I like to see inspired music, but I like to see instruments, uh, people play their instruments that are very, very talented. To feel the digital sweat, you really want to feel it. I definitely like to see a skilled performer. I like to, you know, if I'm going out to a concert, I want to uh, I want to watch somebody make the sound. I want to know that that person is there. There's the the, the drama of the, the chance of failure, that something could go wrong, that the, you know, the person is maybe taking risks. Um, uh, that's uh, that's very exciting and appealing. Um, and just to, just an, an appreciation of musicianship is um, very important to me. And that's that's something that might or might not exist in a uh, in a performance using one of these new interfaces. Music has a ritual function in our society, right? We like to see it live. And when we listen to it, we tend to listen to it in ritual spaces. And so having a computer that just spits it out isn't, you know, the computer doesn't know why it's doing its job. So, you know, but having a person in the, in the loop with the potential for failure, but also the potential for this really amazing kind of thing is really important. You know? Well, there's another thing that's important to me, and I know it's important to you, Matt, as well. That's the sense of seeing a dialogue take place among yeah. the musicians. I mean, there's nothing, I mean, that's why the, the, the improvisational context is interesting to me, where you, you actually see people communicating with each other in musical terms.
I long ago stopped playing electric violins for just the reason that I was more interested in a hybrid of old and new technology with them both really being present. So I love, I, I guess I'm perhaps like, like Mari Kimura in, in, this, in this way. You know, I, I love a great wooden instrument sound. I love to amplify it. I love it to be powerful and present and strong. But I would never want to play a stick instead. I want something with a body, with a sound that's coming out right here. And just, just a single quarter inch cable can then take me into this other world where everything is flexible. <laughs>
Thank you. 